لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النسير أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين خالق السماوات والأرض إلها واحدا أحدا سمدا لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين رحمة للعالمين طه وياسين بالقاسم محمد وعلى وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين ورحمة الله على محبيهم ولعنة الله على عدائهم وقاتليهم وغاصب حقوق حقهم ومنكر فضائلهم مجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتبارك في كتابه الحكيم وفرقانه المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم السيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Continuing our discussion on the development of the self, the building of the self, we have tried in the last couple of discussions to explain and to understand that in order for the self to be developed, our mind, our iman, our aqidah has to first begin to be developed. And once we have our iman firmly rooted, once the faith and the aqidah is in place, then the actions will follow. And the development of the self, this self-building in light of the Quranic teachings and that of the Ahlul Bayt salam, is the ultimate goal that we are inshallah trying to strive to speak about in these nights, in these blessed and holy nights. And as we had talked about yesterday night about the issue of ma'rifat, and how ma'rifat is different than ilm. To have the ma'rifat of something is different than just to have the ilm of something. Awwal al-deen ma'rifat That the first stage of religion is to know the creator. To know my Lord is the beginning of faith. The religion starts at that fundamental, at that point, at that initial, at that beginning. And if you understand and if we try to strive to reach towards the understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and of course, one thing to keep in mind, that Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib wasalam, himself has said, <laughs> that nobody will be able to fully appreciate and understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not be able to think about the full essence, the true essence of Tawheed. You can only reach to a certain level and then it'll stop there. You will not be able to think or reflect. Your mind will not be able to, to comprehend it. Your mind will not be able to take it. So we try to do the best we can to understand and appreciate in light of the Quran and Majid and the Ahl Bayt's teachings as to what Allah Ta'ala's qualities are, how we are told, ordered to obey Allah Ta'ala and how Allah's generosity upon us has been so far reaching that again there one's own ability to appreciate comes into question, is called into question. That when the time that Fir'aun was drowning and he called out to Musa, he says, Ya Musa, help me. And Hazrat Musa said, you are the enemy of Allah, you are the enemy of God. Basically, he, Hazrat Musa ignored that plea. Subsequently, there was a voice heard, the revelation came to Hazrat Musa that he asked you, Fir'aun asked you for help. It was your choice whether you accepted or you refused. But even at that time, even at that moment, after disobeying me for so long, if he would have asked me for help, I would have saved him. The Rahmaniyat of Allah, the Rahimiyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-encompassing mercy of Allah. That is why in Dua'i Kumail we begin with that mercy of Allah. Wasi'at kulla shay. The mercy of Allah that encompasses every single thing that is around. That even if those enemies of Allah, they were to call upon Him, He would still answer them. Imagine that. 
the grace of Allah. So doesn't it befit us to try and become better and try and be the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make ourselves the way Allah ta'ala would want us to be. Make our iman, our deeds, our actions, even our thoughts, our inclinations with that what Allah ta'ala would want. That is reaching towards the ma'rifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is reaching towards the ma'rifat, the recognition. Because somebody was asking yesterday, the difference between ilm, if there's any English translation better than just knowledge. And the best thing that I've been able to come across is the recognition and the appreciation. Recognition and appreciation together to bring about a simple translation of the word ma'rifat. And if we come to the ma'rifat of the holy prophet of Islam, we find that his station, his level needs to be understood in order for us to reach towards that ma'rifat. And again, we try. Our efforts is what Allah Ta'ala will be judging us on. Our, uh, the, whatever we do as far as making an effort is what we will be judged and rewarded on, inshallah. The status of the Holy Prophet has been again debated for centuries and for years. Until today, there are groups in the Muslims who believe and who say that Muhammad is dead, there's no need to remember him, there's no need to ask him for help, there's no need to say any salam to him, there's no need to, for anything, any contact, all contact with the dead is finished. You only talk to and deal with living things and you only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what their argument is. That the Prophet is gone, it's finished, everything is done and over with and that's it, our responsibilities are over. And there is such an important flaw such an important shortcoming in this ideology that even a basic simple student of Islam will be able to respond to that. When somebody, for example, sends you a greeting, you visit so-and-so place, and you come back and that person in that place has given salams to your brother, to your father, or to one of the other mu'minin. You say, Oh, Allah, you have salam hai pache. Itane salam hai pache. What is our response? Alaykum salam. Alaykum salam. In actuality, this is incorrect. Because the person who is bringing the salam to you, when you say alaykum salam or alayka salam, you are saying salam to that person who has brought you the salam. As opposed to being grammatically, Arabically correct, saying alayhis salam. The one who has given me salams, although you are the messenger, you are the postman, alayhis salam. Upon him be peace as well. Alayka salam is you are talking to the person in front of you because the minute you have that calf, the calf is symbolizing the person in front of you. Yani you would only say assalamu alayka when somebody is in front of you and you are responding to them or you are greeting them. Now every Muslim, every single Muslim, 1.1 billion Muslims in the world today, it is an obligation to them to do salawat, salat, right? Namaz. All of you pray namaz, right? And there are <coughs> certain uniform factors in the salat. Every single Muslim, 1.1 billion Muslims in the salat, when they are about to finish, what will they say? After they finish, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. They might say, oh, kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, inna ka hamidu majid. Oh, that's fine. Then what happens after that? After that, what happens? You say, every Muslim will say, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyya wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you, O Prophet of Allah, and the mercy of Allah Ta'ala be upon you. We don't say alayhis salam, we say alaykas salam. That means the Prophet is in front of us, the Prophet is not dead. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyya wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet is there in front of us. Who said that Prophet was dead? Who said that the Prophet had left this world and has no longer contact with anybody and we have no contact with Rasulullah? Allahu Akbar. The fact, the problem is they have not achieved the ma'rifat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They have not realized who was the Prophet. They didn't realize that Allah Ta'ala gave him so many statuses and such a maqam, such a position that in the entire Quran and Majid, from Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim to Min al Jinnati wa Nas, how many times does Muhammad appear in the Quran? The name Muhammad. The name of Ibrahim comes more than Muhammad. The name of Isa comes more than Muhammad. The name of Adam comes more than Muhammad. The name of other Anbiya comes more than the name. I'm talking about just the name, the word Muhammad. 
And then you've got Suratul Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So maybe five, four or five times in the Quran and Majid. Say, yeah, na? You all read the Quran, don't you? Mahi Ramadan, Mahi Mubarak, Mahi Quran. If you all are bad, then you will be a Muhammad Wali Muhammad. In the whole Quran, why? What is the reason for that? There is a philosophy that the Quran is conveying to us. The Quran was revealed to Rasulullah. It was revealed in also praise of Rasulullah. The Quran and Majid is the book that was given to Rasulullah to convey to the Ummah. And the Prophet was given the task of conveying the Quran. Now, what happens here? You know, it's something needs to be cleared, inshallah. I'm a visitor here in this city. And so many times after the program, Mumineen asked me, where have you stayed? Where are you staying? Kya And I tell them, I'm staying at Papa's house. Oh, your father is here in Dar es Salaam? I said, no, 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 my father. My father is in Kitchener, Canada. So why do you say you're staying at Papa's house? I said, because everybody in the family calls uncle. Well, I was in by Papa. So I thought that was his name. I'm staying at Papa's house. They said, Papa, everybody's calling him that. I go to somebody's house new. Sometime later, they call me. They tell me, where are you staying? I'm staying at the house of Samroto. Huh? He says, yeah, I, I heard the madam calling him all the time. Samroto, Samroto. Ajib. Sheikh, don't you understand? What do I understand? His name is not Samroto. His name is Mehbubai. So why is everybody calling him Samroto? No, no, you so much time. He says, because the wife will not use the name of the husband, especially when guests are there. Alhamdulillah, yahan pe ihtiram bhi hai, yahan pe respect bhi hai, izzat bhi hai, miyan bibi, izzat to rakhte hai na. Main us jagah se aata hu, main member se bol nahi sakta hu ki miyan bibi ko kya bulati hai. Salawat par Muhammad Walim. His name is not Samroto. That's what they are because they don't take the name. It is a respect. The respect is because the children will call him Daddy, Baba, Papa, Aga, whatever, depending on the culture. And by not taking the name of, of, of whomsoever, whether it is Mehubai, whether it is Gunam Sanchaja, whatever, you are showing that because he is the elder, he is the head of the family, he is the leader of the family, we don't take his name. The children will call him Baba. The wife will call him so and so. Um, you know, Samroto is the, 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 the humorous term. Because they are showing that the name is not taken. The Quran and Majid is reminding us of that same philosophy of respect that we have. The Quran was revealed to Rasulullah. The name of Muhammad comes only four times in the Holy Quran. Sometimes the Quran says, Ya you are Rasul, Ya you are Nabi, Taha, Yasin, Muzammil, Muddassir, Siraju, Munir. The titles are used because Allah Ta'ala and the Malaika are saying that we are giving the ihtiram to Muhammad. Ya you are Amanu, O Ummati, respect the Muhammad the way we are respecting him in the Quran and Majid as well. The respect of Rasulullah is so great that even the Quran is calling him by his titles, not his name. The name of the Prophet is used rarely, only when there is a necessity. Whatever the maslihat of Allah Ta'ala is. Such a blessed name. Such a blessed name. That anybody, I mentioned in the discussion this afternoon, according to some historians, according to some biographers of Rasulullah, there are 99 names or titles or characteristics of Rasulullah as well. The same way that we've got 100 Asma'ul Husna, there are a number of names for Rasulullah, you know, Muhammad, Ahmad, and of course the ones that I've already mentioned from the Quran and Majid. And so these titles symbolize. But when it came to reciting the Shahada, the Kalama, when it came for somebody to be a Muslim, out of all of those titles and names of Rasulullah, the one name was selected, the main name was selected, that if you want to be a Muslim, you have to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa The marifat of Rasulullah, the marifat of those around Rasulullah has to be understood as well. My question to the Mu'mineen, my question is to the Muslims of the world. Everybody who is a biographer or a historian or a writer, please remind me, mujhe, this name of Muhammad, who kept the name Muhammad? Wow. 
You open the newspaper in Karachi. You go to different Muslim countries. They have a page. Okay, this one accepted Islam. This one said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad. Islam. This one became a Muslim. This one became a Muslim. This one, and his name was David. We made it Dawood. His name was this. Alfred. We could call him Ali. His name was so and so. We changed the name. Because when somebody comes from Kufr to Iman, when somebody comes from Gayd Islam to Islam, we change the names. I asked Maulana Sahib, Ulama will be telling you, is it wajib to change the name? I have told him every night I will be doing different tests. Those who believe it is wajib to change the name, recite one salwat. Those who don't believe it's wajib to change the name, recite salwat. The majority seems to be of the of course names do not need to be changed. Your name does not reflect who you are. But some people like to change the name just so that they feel better within themselves. It's not wajib. It's not wajib. Those of you who recited the salwat, may Allah give you the salwat, the sawab of salwat as well. And when you're reciting the salwat, recite it with enthusiasm. Recite it because don't do kanjusi vera when you're reciting salwat. Because it is narrated. According to Rewaite that I myself have read and heard, that when Zuhure Imam takes place, your dollars and shillings and yen and euros and all that in this dunya that you have will have no value whatsoever. It will be null and void. Those who will be the richest or those who recited salwat in this dunya with enthusiasm and with oh. So who kept the name of Muhammad? Who kept that name? You will tell me that because Hazrat Abdullah had already passed away. So perhaps that authority was on the shoulder of somebody who took care of the Prophet. It was either Abdul Muttalib or Abu Talib who kept the name of Muhammad. Oh my Allah! Now you, the Muslims, are telling me that he became a Prophet later. And both of these elders were kuffar. Na'udhu Billah, Na'udhu Billah. So Ya Allah! As we do in the dunya, maybe it's better if you change the name to something else. Change the name of Muhammad because some kafir had kept the name according to the Muslim writers. According to the Orientalists, they were not Muslims. Abu Talib, Abdul Muttalib and that lineage. La ilaha illallah. So I will say to my Allah that this is a sunnah we have in this dunya. Allah Ta'ala will say, no, 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 no. We have acknowledged the iman of the Abdul Muttalib and Abu Talib. We have acknowledged their Iman. And not only have we acknowledged their Iman, anybody who wants to go from Kufr to Islam will take the name of that name of Muhammad, that name of Rasulullah, the name of Muhammad, which was kept by one of those Buzurg. To show you what their Iman and Aqidah is in our opinion. The name of Muhammad. What else does the name do? Reaching towards the Ma'rifat of all the Rasul. The name of Muhammad is such a blessed name. Some people ask us that we are making dua. Sometimes our dua doesn't get accepted. What is the problem? What's the reason? The reasons are numerous. In another discussion, I might talk about dua and that. But I'm just going to talk about a couple of things today. We are told that if you, are, you have a dua, you have a request, then there are certain things you should do. Now, when, when we talk about dua, of course, keep in mind, the Arabic word dua is different than what we call dua. In Arabic, what we might think of dua is actually called hajat, our requests. Dua is actually supplicating, presenting oneself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is dua. So we have to ask that our hajat doesn't get accepted. What's the reason for that? Many reasons are there. Sometimes the day, sometimes the time, sometimes the maslihat, sometimes the reason. There are certain things that the duas have taught us. That one sure way of getting your duas accepted. One sure way. And that sure way the Quran and Majid guides us and tells us. When we ask our youngsters that we pray, we do namaz, we fast, we do salat, we do psalm, we do all these things. What was the reason? What is the niyyah? The very first day we had talked about niyyah, the intention. Even in our Masail session, we talked about niyyah. We are doing, we are fasting, we are saying salat, we are coming to the Imam Bara, to the Husseiniya, it's Shabbi Juma, we're listening or reciting Dua'i Kumail, Dua'i Aftatam. What for? Qurbatan ilallah ta'ala. Everything we do for the sake of Allah. 
And I had mentioned there was a lot of discussion when I had said that in Jannat there's no namaz. Alhamdulillah. Some of you were relieved. Some of you were concerned. Okay. I don't want to go into that again. We'll move forward from there. We do it for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. We fast for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. We go for Hajj, Qurbatan illallah Ta'ala. We give khums and zakat, Qurbatan illallah Ta'ala. We go for Jihad, we go for Hajj, Qurbatan illallah Ta'ala. Everything is done for the sake of Allah. Does Allah pray namaz? Okay. Does Allah fast? You'll say, what are you saying, Shaykh? Does Allah have to go for Jihad or Amr bil Mahruf or Mahin al He said, no, no, no. We do everything for the sake of Allah. How can you say that Allah does anything? Everything is for Allah. Now, what if I told you that Allah does something? There's a certain action that Allah Ta'ala, certain deed that Allah Ta'ala does. And I will try and justify it from the Quran and Majid. I'm not speaking from myself. I don't do that. Okay? There will be a bit of shock here. A bit of concern. I can already see Shaquille by looking at me as if I hope this guy gets out of this fast and soon. Allah Ta'ala, we do everything for Allah. Allah doesn't do anything. In Allah, Allah, kulli shayin qadir. Allah is above and beyond that. What if I said that Allah Himself is introducing one action that He is doing? And He is telling, telling His malaika to do. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah Jalla Jalalahu, Khalik is Samawati wal Earth, Allah the Jabbar Mutakabir, Allah the Creator, the Almighty, Allah the Azizul Hakim. Allah Ta'ala is saying, I in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. I Allah and my malaika, they are sending blessings upon my nabi. The ayat continues, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. If you are believers, agar mu'min ho, iman hai aapke dil mein, iman hai aapke paas, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Send blessings upon him as he deserves to be blessed. And this salwat is what I was saying is the guarantee for our duas, inshallah. We are told that this is a makbul dua. It is a makbul accepted deed when we recite salwat. And that is why we are encouraged. Before we start our duas and our hajat, we recite salwat before. And at the end we recite salwat. Why? Because the malaika know that this is kabul. The end of it is kabul. So Allah Ta'ala says to the malaika, if the beginning is accepted and the end is accepted, then whatever is in between, accept that as well, inshallah. Salwa Ta'ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. You will see Dua Iftata, you will see Dua Kumail, you will see any of the duas of Imam Ali ibn Hussein, Zainul Abin, Sayyid al Sajjad, in the various, in the Sahifa Sajjadiya, Sahifa Kamila. You will see how many times in each and every dua the salwat appears. Because we want to make sure that there's no shortcoming on our part in praying, reciting the dua, so the salwat makes it accepted. You know, I often give an example to the youngsters. You want to write a letter. You want to write a letter and it's finished, you take it to the post office. The post office does what? They put a stamp on it. Now, I go to the post office in Dar es Salaam, Upanga, not far from our place, there's a post, I think, um, uh, a postal outlet, post office. And they have there, and I take, go, go with my letter, I want to mail some postcard, I want to mail a letter. But I tell the postmaster, they'll say, no, 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 what are you talking about? I say, I brought lots of stamps from Canada. Now you see, when I give this example, youngsters nowadays, teenagers, they're wondering what I'm talking about. Letters? What's that? Is that something different than email? How many times I've asked people for their address, their mailing address, they give me an email address. I don't think the postman will be able to deliver this letter, but hey. And you know, it's, it's sad, my, I don't want to say my elders, because I don't want anybody to feel old. But there was, there was a time when writing letter was such, such a loved chore. Those who are engaged, and I know that some of you might be in that position, Mujtaba, you are there as well. And you are writing now emails and SMS and text and all that, and you have got things now called emoticons. I didn't understand these languages and this vocabulary. And I learned a whole new language, TTYL, G2G, and all this. I said, what is this? I used to think they're swearing at me when I would see this. It says, you know, Shafiq Bai, we're not swearing at you. Titi, we'll talk to you later. I have, you know, G2G, I got to go. And I, whole different language. They missed out on what many of us sitting here, a majority of us sitting out, they missed out on something. You know, when you were writing a letter to her, 
કેવો પ્યારો કાગળ હતો યુ રાઈટ અ લેટર સો બ્યુટિફુલી ડ્રો લિટ લિલ હાર્ટ એન્ડ લિલ લિલ ડ્રોઈંગ્સ એન્ડ ડિઝાઇન્સ એન્ડ યુ ટેક અ રોઝ પેટલ એન્ડ પુટ ઇટ ઇન સાઇડ થ્રોક અતર બી નાખતા હતા રાઈટ નાઉ યુ કેન પુટ અતર ઇન ધ કમ્પ્યુટર્સ ઇટ ઇલ સ્પોઇલ વોરંટીઝ એન્ડ ઇન્સ્યોરન્સ વોન્ટ કવર ધોઝ થિંગ્સ યુ પુટ ઇટ ઇન એન્ડ યુ ગો ટુ ધ પોસ્ટ ઓફિસ એન્ડ ટેલ ધ પોસ્ટ પાસ ગીવ મી ધ નાઇસેસ્ટ સ્ટેમ્પ યુ હેવ રાઈટ આઈ એમ લેટ રાઈટિંગ અ લેટર ટુ હર બિલીવ મી ઇફ યુ થિંક આઈ એમ જોકિંગ આઈ સ્ટીલ હેવ અ બોક્સ ઓફ લેટર્સ એટ હોમ ઇન કેનેડા કિચન એન્ડ I'm sure she also has all those letters mashallah that you were writing to her eh I see all of you turning red here mashallah ah ane bhi khabar chhe ne ah because she's got the box as well and she would write to you the same thing she would use the feminine perfumes and you would use those nice letters. and you'd be thinking only of her and she'd be thinking of, and you're writing the letter and spending time now it's all tick 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 send you missed her believe me my youngsters my children you've missed a lot you know what we used to go, how long it would take us a day half a day And if you think I'm lying from Mimbar Rasul, ask your parents, ask your grandparents. They'll tell you. I don't want to say any more from Mimbar Rasul. My time is running out. Shabe Juma che kali week diwa se mane khabar che. And so you do that, and you give the nicest stamp because you want to make sure. And people will, will write, you know, Kitmir and Bismillah, and they will write all kinds of things in that letter to make sure that only ne ponchi jai. Hey, abre karam, itna na baras ke wa ana sakhe, hai na? Everything would be written in these letters. Tike. and then you put the stamp and inshallah after 4 or 5 days or 3 or 4 days the letter will get there and she will be just as happy as you were writing it she will be as happy to read it now things are different you know saadi in his poetry the iranian poet saadi beautifully he talks about this ishq and the mashkuk and and the 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 aashiq and the aashika and he he writes beautifully like and i don't have the time to go into that but he's talking about how that letter was written with what feeling that letter is written with how much enthusiasm that letter was written and mailed and how many hajar people must have kept right putting that letter in the mailbox ya barabar sai salamat pahunchi jaye now to we know when we hit send unless something is wrong with your server unless you know your your voda or tigo or airtel has got some problems inshallah you'll it'll get there huh? no mix ups as long as you've got you know charge amount enough shillings it'll get there but that stamp guaranteed that letter if you put the mail box letter on the mailbox problem there is a very beautiful lesson we learn because people's biggest complaint when they are doing hajat is how come our hajat doesn't get accepted and one of the things that the ahlul bayt alayhi muslam have taught us is make sure you use the right stamp your stamp from canada or america will not work in tanzania just like a tanzanian stamp will not work in uae and therefore you need to have the local stamp whatever the stamp for that post office is my malaika have reminded me of that same thing ilahi fa kayfa hi lati ya sattar al ghuyub wa ya allam al ghuyub wa ya kashif al qurub igfir dhunubi kullaha we're asking igfir dhunubi kullaha Oh my Allah forgive all my sins ya Allah forgive me accept me ik fir dhunubi kullaha forgive all of my sins the letter is ready the letter has been sealed but now what happens we need the stamp the stamp is bi hurmat muhammad wa ali muhammad You want the dua to be accepted you want the hajj to be the stamp has to go on bi hurmat muhammad wa ali muhammad bi haqq muhammad wa ali muhammad fa salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad when you remember muhammad and ali muhammad then your letter is guaranteed to get to the post office in the heavens inshallah that is ma'rifat of rasulullah the name of rasulullah and ali rasul becomes that guarantee that our letters get there the last closing point inshallah the ma'rifat of the imam Imam because we need to continue I know I'm going a little bit quickly inshallah because I just wanted to finish this because tomorrow we'll be talking a little bit about family issues from the lives of the Ahlul Bayt and the Qur'an Majid on Saturday we'll be talking about technology and science inshallah if Allah gives me the life and the ability so I need to finish inshallah these two or three points inshallah this last remaining point inshallah the Imam's ma'rifat the Imam's ma'rifat has to be achieved Rasulullah and Ali Rasul we need to cross it and understand the world might say that muhammad is gone our marifa tells us something totally different today recognition of the imam you heard yesterday to know the imam to recognize to have the marifa of the imam gives us powers beyond comprehension a man comes to imam jafar ibn muhammad as-sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam and he says ya ibn rasulullah he comes from khorasan He says, "Mola, 
He keeps his sword ready. He says, Yabna Rasulullah. It is now time to take your haq. Your haq has been taken, your, the ghasbi, uh, the ghasbin have taken your rights for so long now. It is now time to take your haq. I have got a hundred thousand fighters in Khorasan with their swords ready to help you, Mullah. Rise. Hundred thousand. Imam is listening. One of the things about our Aima, they don't get emotional and they don't get irrational and they don't start, you know, like somebody comes to me and says, you know, Shafiq Bhai, there's 100,000 people ready to support you if you want to become the mayor of Dar es Salaam, the president of Tanzania, let's go. And I say, oh, okay, mashallah, let's go, let's, you know. Imams don't do this. Is, this is what the maqam of Imamat is all about. This is what maqam of Masub is all about. There is a very clear maslihat that they are acting on. Imam is listening quietly. Imam is listening. The Imam tells his gula, his servant, turn on the tandoor, the oven, turn it on. He talks to this Khorasani. Sometime later, the tandoor is ready, the oven is ready. The Imam takes the Khorasani. He says, Bai, brother, you're from Khorasan. We've finished our discussion. Get into this fire, get into this tandoor. The man says, Mawla, Yabna Rasulullah, I came to offer you help, now you want to kill me. It's okay, if you don't want to rise, it's okay, finish. I, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry, I've got a wife and kids I have to worry about over there. Iska kya hoga? Sutha se lukano. Maaf kar jo, kudafis. He's about to leave. Maaf says, okay. Just then, a knock comes at the door of the Imam. Harun Maki is entering. He greets the Imam. Assalamu alaikum ibn Rasulullah. He greets the Imam. He, imam tells him, Harun, get into this tanur. Get into this oven. The historians say that Harun and Maki didn't even take off his sandals. When the Imam says, get inside there, he came inside and jumped inside there without even taking off his sandals. Itaat of the Imam. Allahu Akbar. Obedience to the Imam. He gets in without us. The Khorasani is looking that what Imam has done this to this poor man. Kali salam karwa ulu ayo to. Ane awi halat Imam kari nai kache ni. Kya ho gaya hai? He was just thinking. He didn't say anything. The Imam takes him back into the living room. And the Imam starts talking to him as if nothing has happened. And this man's mind is in that tanur. Only his mind was in the tanur. His body was sitting with him. He says, what has happened? The Imam realizes that there's a great deal of discomfort. He goes back to the tanur. He lifts the tanur. And Harun and Maki, surrounded by fire, surrounded by fire, is sitting down, reciting the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala and the salwat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. He's sitting. The same way the fire didn't burn Ibrahim Khalilullah, Harun and Maki was also saved. Imam tells Harun to come out. And then he looks at that Khorasani. And he said, you told me that there's a hundred thousand soldiers ready with their swords drawn. Out of that hundred thousand, how many are like this? How many are like this? That's what the Imam wants. 313, our discussion on Zuhur Imam and Intizar Imam will be coming inshallah. Bi'ithnillah. 313, but what kind of 313 the Imam wants? Like this. That is the ma'rifat of the Imam. That is why on the plains of Karbala on the day of Ashura, on the night before Ashura, the Imam is sitting with his companions and he's giving a very brief khutbah and is telling them after the khutbah, he says that these enemies, those who have gathered here, they are after my blood, not any of yours. You are welcome to leave. You may go. The Imam makes an offer to them. The Imam makes an offer to them. He said that I am lifting the bay'ah from your shoulders. You will not be accountable on the day of judgment. I will tell Rasulullah. I will tell my grandfather Rasulullah that you fulfilled whatever you had to. I lifted you the bayat. Go, leave. I will tell the Prophet that you fulfilled everything. You've stayed hungry and thirsty for all these days as well. Not one person moves from that tent. Not one. The Imam says, perhaps you are shy. Perhaps you are embarrassed that if you leave, somebody will see you. Or I might feel, uh, you might want to not be seen. The Imam takes the candles and puts them out. 
And he says, now whoever wishes to leave, they may do so in the darkness. Nobody is watching. Not one of them moves from the place. Not one of them moves. It was at that time that the Imam said that the companions that I have got, no Nabi, no Imam before me, no Imam after me has got until the Lord Imam. The companions that are with me, one of the companions, Sahabi ne kaha ke Abna Rasulullah, ya Maula, jab Imam ne wapas chama jala diya, to unhone kaha ke Maula, agar hum aapko chhod ke is halat mein chale jayenge, to kaise muh dikhayenge Rasool Khuda ko kaise muh dikhayenge Amirul Mu'minin ko Fatima Zehra ko kya jawab denge? Maula, hum kasam khane ko tayar hai, ke aaj isi meydan mein hum pyaase bhi hai, bhooke bhi hai, lekin ye dushman agar humko sattar martaba katal karke hamari laashi ke tukre tukre karke agar marzi ilahi se humko wapas jaan mil jaye, Maula, aur bhi fir bhi hum jaan dene ko kurban ho jayenge, Maula fir bhi जान देने के लिए आपके लिए कुर्बान हो जाएंगे तैयार हो जाएंगे आमाल हो जाएंगे मौला ये वो मैदान है मौला ने कहा ये वो मैदान है ऐसे ऐसे साहबी हमको मिले ना किसी इमाम को ना किसी नबी को मिला उसे यालमुल्लादीन तालमायामन कलिमियन कलिमोल इन्ना लिल्लाहि व इन्ना इलैह रहमतुर्रहीम Allah accept this ibadah from us. Forgive our sins. Give us the tawfiq to remain away from sins. Ya Allah, let us have the true ma'rifat of Allah Ta'ala for Rasulullah and for the Aima. Ya Allah, protect our ulama, our maraj who are serving while the Imam is in occultation. Ya Allah, those who, are, who have passed away, grant them maghfirat. When we leave this world, Ya Allah, protect us from the difficulties of mouth, the difficulties in the qabr, the difficulties on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Ya Allah. We ask you for the month of this holy Ramadan al-Sharif, for the sake of this Shabh Jummah, Laylatul Jummah, the holiest night of the week. Ya Allah, hasten the return of our Mawla, Imam al-Hujjah, Ajallah ta'ala. Make us amongst the Ashab in the Ansar of the Imam. Let us see Zaman al dhuhr with our own eyes. Until the end of our lives, we stay with the Imam. If we can recite one Surah Fatiha for the Marhumin who are no longer with us, because it is Shabbat Jummah, let us do one time Surah Fatiha, three times Surah Tawheed, for the Thawab of the entire Quran, for the Marhumin, and for ourselves. Al-Fatiha, Bismillah. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين كان عبد ويا كان استعين كان سرات مستقيم سرات الذين نعمت عليهم فيد المغضوب عليهم من الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله واحد الله السمن لم يلد من يلد لم يكن فضل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله واحد الله السمن لم يلد من يلد لم يكن فضل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله واحد الله السمن لم يلد من يلد لم يكن فضل صدق الله العظيم